In this video, we're going over the best crafted weapons in the game from the blacksmith profession that give cool and unique chance on hit abilities. Starting this off at number 10, we have a tie between the Arcanite Champion and the Corium Champion. These two swords are both two-handers and both have the same chance on hit effect to heal the player for a small amount, around 250 to 450 HP. As you can imagine, a small healing spell with a fairly low proc chance is fairly useless for most players. Additionally, a similar weapon enchant called Crusader also exists. This not only provides the same benefit with a much higher proc, but it can also be added to both one-handed weapons, making it twice as effective as the Arcanite Champion or Corium Champion. Additionally, both the Arcanite and Corium Champion have pretty low DPS ratings for their time. Although the Corium Champion does significantly higher damage than the Arcanite Champion, as indicated by the Corium Champion's epic purple quality and the Arcanite Champion's blue rare quality, both weapons do have one upside in the fact that their proc also gives the player a strength buff, usually around a plus 120. The buff, called Strength of the Champion, also lasts 30 seconds, which is a very long time for a combat buff. It's because of the strength buff that both these weapons made onto this list. The little bit of healing is nice, but it's nothing compared to the 30 second buff for melee fighters. Now, back to the downsides of these two weapons. Both of these weapons are taught by blacksmithing plants. The plants for the Arcanite Champion drop from Gorolok and Vulcrack from the Blackrock Spire dungeon. However, with the wand revamp of the dungeon, the boss and plans were removed from the game. To remedy this after some feedback, Blizzard added a new blacksmithing plan for the Arcanite Champion to the loot table for the last boss of Lord Blackrock Spire, who was named Overlord Wormthalak. Meanwhile, the plans for the Corium Champion have a very low chance to drop from trash mobs in most TBC dungeons and raids. All in all, because of their low desirability due to their pretty low proc rate, the expensiveness to craft, and the fact that other weapons and weapon enchants are simply better, both the Arcanite Champion and the Corium Champion land at number 10 on this list. And at number 9, we have Nightfall. This is an epic one-headed axe from Vanilla and has a chance to give the player's target a debuff. The debuff is named Spell Vulnerability, and as you guessed it, it increases the spell damage taken by the target. Sadly, this debuff not only has a fairly low proc rate, but it only increases the spell damage taken by 15% and only lasts for 5 seconds. However, this does work with everybody else in your party in raid, so that's pretty good. The reason why Nightfall lands number 9 on this list is because it can be very useful in raids and in PvP. Playing solo, most axe wielding classes aren't going to be using many spells in their combat rotation and so the debuff Nightfall can proc is pretty useless. However, in a raid or in PvP or other group content, the spell damage increase can be utilized properly by, let's say, a mage, who should definitely be using spells in their combat rotation. The blacksmithing plants for Nightfall can be purchased from a Thorium Brotherhood vendor in the Blackrock Dept named Loctis Dark Bargainer, meaning it wasn't a hassle at all to get the plans, as long as you had the rep if you had the required crafting reagents. You could even learn the plan and forge the weapon in the Blackrock Depths, and then equip it and use it in the dungeon, all without having to leave the instance. While Nightfall can be pretty useful in dungeons, the axe really shows its value in raids, where it can make damage burst quicker and more frequent. In fact, it was getting so much use for dungeons and raid bosses that Blizzard finally decided towards the end of TBC, the axe had to be nerfed. Since people were still using this axe towards the end of TBC, the axe was nerfed so that it had a chance to fail on targets above level 60. Still, the fact that Blizz went out of the way to nerf this pretty OP weapon, especially so early in the game's history, makes it all the more reason that Nightfall deserves a spot on this list. And at number 8 on this list, we have an epic two-handed sword from TBC with the name of Lionheart Executioner. This weapon's chance on hit effect is that it increases the strength of a player by 100. The name of this buff is called Lionheart and lasts for 10 seconds. The proc rate is 3 per minute, and since the buff lasts 10 seconds, that's 30 seconds of the buff per 1 minute. That means that roughly half the time the player is in combat with this weapon, the buff could be active. This weapon is very rare in the current version of the game, as the plans to make the Lionheart Executioner were removed from the game in the Cataclysm expansion, as the sword originally required being a master swordsmith to craft and wield. As such, the number of players still playing the game that still have this recipe unlocked is very low. Additionally, the Lionheart Executioner is virtually useless in retail, since the two stat squishes and level squishes in WoW's history have pretty much reduced all of its stats to single digit numbers. This is the case for all the weapons on this list though, but the Lionheart Executioner is special because the recipe to learn this item has no longer existed in the game for over a decade. An important distinction to note is that while the plans were removed, the weapon itself still exists in retail, as old players can still craft it. However, the weapon is buying on pickup, so it cannot be traded or sold to other players, unfortunately. Blizzard has yet to add an alternative means to obtain this weapon's plans in retail. Luckily, however, the Lionheart Executioner does share the same model as the Lionheart Executioner Reborn weapon made with Mr. Pandaria blacksmithing, and that item can be learned as a transmog. And as one can imagine, the recipe to craft the Lionheart Executioner is long and expensive, and the sword is actually the third one in a line of swords that the players must craft, with each weapon going into crafting their next tier of the sword. 
Back to the weapon itself, the strength proc is not actually the only benefit the weapon offers. When equipped, the Lionheart Executioner also increases the player's chance to resist fear effects by 8%. This is a small stat buff, but it is a buff nonetheless. And at number 7, we have a rare quality one-handed axe from Classic with the name of the Annihilator. This axe has a fun chance on hit to reduce an enemy's armor by 200. Even better, this proc, which is named Armor Shatter, can stack up to 3 times. Even better than that is that it can stack with the warrior's ability, Sunder Armor. As you can imagine, this quickly renders a lot of enemies' armor almost useless. And in fact, this weapon draws so much aggro it is considered one of the best tanking weapons in Classic outside of raiding. The blacksmithing plans for the Annihilator dropped from the Quartermaster Zegris, a boss in Blackrock Spire. Up until Cataclysm, Annihilator required Master Axsmith to equip, but since Cata, any class that can equip axes can use it. Annihilator's major downsides are that it's very expensive to craft and that its damage is pretty lackluster. Additionally, at the beginning of WAD, the weapon was made to no longer work on targets above level 63. It seems Blizzard detected fun was being had once again. While we can sing the praises for Annihilators all day, there are pretty similar weapons that we should mention here as well. The Dark Iron Sunderer also reduces the target's armor. In Classic, this debuff reduces the armor on a target by 300 for 20 seconds. While nowhere near as powerful as the Annihilator is, it still deserves a brief mention on this list. And at number 6, we have an epic one-handed mace named Dragon Strike. This mace that was introduced in TBC has a chance to increase the player's haste by 212 for 10 seconds. Not only was this a huge haste buff, but the weapon itself looks amazing as it's a molten dragon's head. It was among the best crafted weapons in TBC. To craft this weapon, Blacksmith had to specialize in weaponsmithing and then subspecialize in hammersmithing. Dragon Strike is actually the third hammer in a series of crafted hammers, with the first one being the Dark Fist Hammer, which is then required to make the Dragon Maw Hammer, which is then required to make the Dragon Strike Mace. Additionally, the weapon is by a pickup and only Master Hammersmith can wield it. Although the Cataclysm expansion brought the removal of weaponsmithing, and with it the removal of the recipe for Dragon Strike, Blacksmith who already had learned it prior to Kata can still craft it. Another weapon with this same model was also added in Mr. Pandaria, once again as a craftable weapon called Dragon Strike Reborn so players can still at least get the cool transmog if they want it. And at number 5, we have a fun, unique weapon called the Phantom Blade. This rare one-handed sword has a great proc which applies two debuff effects to its target. The first is that it reduces the target's armor for 20 seconds. This is just like the Annihilator and the Dark Iron Sunderer from our number 7 spot. But the Phantom Blade comes with an extra bonus. This bonus is that the target cannot stealth or turn invisible. Additionally, the fact the debuff lasts an insane 20 seconds is especially worth noting. While it has a chance on hit proc, when it does work, the Phantom Blade is a mighty defensive tool against sneaky rogues and druids in PvP, as it prevents them from stealthing. Unfortunately, rogues can still use Vanish, and Night Elves can still use Shadow Mill. Still, the Phantom Blade is a one of a kind with its proc effect giving two debuffs, and those debuffs having a very long duration. And at number 4, we have a tie between two swords. Both the Frost Tiger Blade and Frost Guard are one-headed swords from Classic that have a chance on hit to slow an enemy target. The Frost Tiger Blade is an uncommon item and isn't too intensive to craft. When proc'd, the Frost Tiger Blade will cause some frost damage on top of the weapon damage and also slow the target by 50% for 5 seconds. Frost Guard is a rare item and very resource intensive to craft, requiring 18 Arcanite Bars and 8 Blue Sapphires, just to name two of the crafting reagents. Frost Guard slows down the target by 30% for 5 seconds, but it also increases the time between the enemy's attacks by 25%. Players may recognize Frost Guard as it was first seen in the Orc campaign in Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne. You get it off of a dying soldier after you have Rexar, Rokon, Chen Stormstout, and Jaina Proudmoore fight through an island of Naga. Another thing that makes these swords so unique is the fact that the procs they trigger are mage abilities. The Frost Tiger Blade when procced applies a Frost Bolt to the enemy, and the Frost Guard applies the Chilled debuff. This means any class can do frost damage with this weapon as long as they wield a sword. These items are particularly helpful against Vestidius, the giant slime optional boss in the Temple of Ankaraj that must be frozen to fight. Slowing targets can be a literal lifesaver, especially in Classic where kiting is much more common. Slowing also has many other uses like in PvP or stopping ads from getting to the boss in dungeons and raids. Because of how many applications they can be used in, the Frost Tiger Blade and Frost Guard come in at number 4 on our list. And at number 3, we have a 3-way tie. The Dark Iron Pulverizer, Hammer of the Titans, and Storm Herald all have the incredibly insane power to stun the player's enemy. The Dark Iron Pulverizer is a rare quality two-handed mace from Classic that has a chance on hit to stun the target for 8 seconds. This mace can only be crafted the Black Anvil in the Black Rock Depths dungeon. The 8 second stun may seem really overpowered, but the proc rate is extremely low, with about 1 proc every 5 minutes. Additionally, Blizzard nerfed the Dark Iron Pulverizer in wads that no longer worked on players. This nerf was pretty huge and shows just how powerful the Dark Iron Pulverizer is. The Hammer of the Titans is another rare 2 handed mace from Classic that can also stun an enemy but only lasts for 3 seconds. 
However, its proc rate is much higher, and in fact is one of the best weapons in the game for PvP Paladins and Classic. Combined with the ability Seal of Justice, the Hammer of the Titans pretty much allowed Paladins to permanently stun lock enemies, including other players. Storm Herald is the last crafted weapon that can stun players. This epic two-handed mace was added in TBC. Like some of the other crafted epic weapons on this list, to craft the weapon, Blacksmiths had to craft two other epic weapons in order to craft this one. Additionally, players must be a master hammersmith to both craft and equip Storm Herald. When Kata removed the weapon smithy specialization from the game, it also removed the recipe for the Storm Herald. However, it was not removed from the recipe list of blacksmiths who had already learned it. Like the Lionheart Executioner, a new craftable version of Storm Herald was added in Mop and is named Storm Herald Reborn. It doesn't have the proc ability to stun, but it does grant a T-Mog of the original weapon. And at number 2, we have Serenity. This rare quality one-handed mace from Classic has a chance on hit to dispel a magic effect on the enemy. Although it is a bit expensive to craft, being able to dispel a magic buff on a target can be quite handy in many situations. Similar to the Frost Tiger Blade in Frostguard, Serenity's proc debuff can actually apply the priest ability Dispel Magic. Now, what makes Serenity so unique and why it lands so high on this list is it has been nerfed so many times throughout the game's history. The first big nerf came in TBC when it was made to almost always fail on targets above level 60. Since then, it has had its proc rate lowered many times. The plans to obtain Serenity are a bit unique in the fact that they can be found on the floor in the Stratholm dungeon. Specifically, they appear as a piece of paper on the ground in the Horde section of the Scarlet Bastion, in the hallway right before the final boss. An extra dispel for free is a huge advantage, especially in Classic. It can remove buffs from bosses and players, making dungeons, raids, and PvP easier without having to manage the cooldowns of the player's own dispel ability if they even have one. Additionally, mobs in Classic are much more likely to be able to buff one another, meaning Serenity is even more potent as an offensive weapon. The utility of the Serenity Mace and the gameplay implications are demonstrated by the many nurses received in the game, and for that reason it lands a number 2 spot on this list even if maybe the Storm Herald was much more iconic. And finally, at number 1, we have the Shatterer. This one-handed rare quality mace from Classic is simply overpowered. The Shatterer has a chance on hit to disarm its target for 10 seconds. This makes it very useful for ensuring that a player's target does reduced or no damage. In fact, it was so OP that in WAD, after the stats question and combat changes, its disarm proc effect was removed entirely, as it was simply too powerful and because they were removing all of the disarm effects from the game at that time. Not only does the Shatterer proc frequently, but its crafted materials are not too hard to obtain either, meaning it's pretty accessible in Classic. On a side note, the Shatterer can be compared to the Silent Fang, which is another OP sword from Classic Skolomons that could silence the target for 6 seconds. The Shatterer can only be made and equipped by Master Hammersmiths. The ability to learn the recipe was removed in Cataclysm alongside Weaponsmithing, but players can still get the T-Mog for the Shatterer as it shares a model with three other weapons from Classic that are still craftable in retail. The Shatterer is so notable simply because it was one of the few times that the fun detected meme actually holds no sway because it could completely break game mechanics. Not only did this mace work on players, but it could also work on any mob regardless of its level. Doing PvP with no damage is less than ideal, and defeating bosses for essentially free loot without having to mitigate damage essentially broke WoW in some aspects. The fact that the disarm debuff lasted for 10 seconds is also another huge factor of how big of an impact in gameplay it had. The Shatterer is so OP that perhaps it's the true reason of the Shatterer, not some angry emo black dragon. Alright, and that does it for the video. A bit of an obscure and niche topic, but a welcome surprise anyway. It's a shame that more crafted weapons don't have unique chance on hit abilities like these ones, and Dragonflight seems like a good time to bring some back. I can understand the hesitancy at Blizzard to avoid another Shatterer disaster, but making weapons with cool effects is just so much fun. Weapons having fun abilities seems to have been part of the inspiration of the artifact weapons from Legion as well, which is food for thought. Anywho, leave your ideas and suggestions for new videos in the comments below, and maybe we'll turn your idea into a video. In fact, this video came from an idea from a YouTube comment. Stay healthy, safe, and hopefully you get some nice procs in your life before you see the next video.